Hello friends, in this video we see important result of Riemann integrable function. Treatment of this result is a function f is integrable over close interval a comma b if and only if there is a number i lying between lower sum and upper sum such that for any partition for epsilon any epsilon greater than 0 there exist a partition p of close interval a comma b such that upper sum minus i is less than epsilon and i minus lower sum is less than epsilon concept the idea behind this result is a very simple as we know that upper sum is a number lower sum is a number and i is a number lies between that number for example let us take a very simple two numbers our upper sum this is for our convenience i have taken this example let us uh, see uh, upper sum is uh, suppose 10 and lower sum is suppose 2 then we can see that there are infinite number lies between 10 and 2 so i is a number which lies between these two numbers and we have to show that this upper sum minus i is less than epsilon and i minus lower sum is also less than epsilon now if we prove this first we consider f is let f is a Riemann integrable over a comma b this is an symbol used to denote uh, the function which is a Riemann integrable over close interval a comma b and we know that if function is a Riemann integrable then there exist by condition of integrability we know that there for epsilon greater than 0 there exist a partition p of close interval a comma b such that such that whenever this mu of p is less than delta upper sum minus lower sum of the function is less than epsilon upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon this is a condition of integrability we have seen this statement if uh, you would like to know this you should watch our previous video on the conditions of integrability now here you can see that upper sum minus lower sum we have taken the already positive values and 10 minus 2 this is my example we have taken 10 minus 2 and 10 minus 2 is uh, 8 and this 8 is less than epsilon this is for clearness i have chosen these big values okay and if we choose any number i lies between these two suppose 5 is a number lies between then if we take uh, this upper sum minus this i this is u i uh, upf and this is i then you can see 10 minus 5 10 minus 5 is a 5 and 5 is less than 8 right and 8 is less than epsilon so obviously 5 is less than epsilon this is an concept behind this again uh, here 5 minus 2 5 minus 3 is uh, 5 minus 2 is 3 and 3 is less than 8 but 8 is less than epsilon so we apply the same criteria here uh, mod of upf minus i is less than mod of upf minus lpf and which is less than epsilon therefore upf minus i is less than epsilon again i minus lpf is less than upper sum minus lower sum which is 
less than epsilon therefore this i minus lpf is less than epsilon and hence this proves the first part of this now conversely if we take that there exists a partition such that for epsilon greater than 0 there exists a partition p of close interval a comma b such that the conditions u p f u p f upper sum minus i is less than epsilon by 2 let us take this as this is less than any epsilon so we take epsilon by 2 and lower sum lower i minus lower sum i minus lower sum is also suppose less than epsilon by 2 then let us calculate upper sum minus lower sum upper sum minus lower sum equal to upper sum minus i plus i minus lpf now separating the modulus this is less than upf minus i plus mod of i minus lpf and this is epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 equal to epsilon so the function here upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon this shows that the function is integrable function so in this manner we can show that the result where function f is integrable over close interval a comma b there is a number i lies between this upper sum minus lower sum which satisfies the condition upper sum minus i is less than epsilon and i minus lower sum is also less than we proceed to prove another important theorem on integrability if we have two functions f1 and f2 and both are integrable functions on same domain a comma b then what about their addition whether the addition of two function is integrable or it is not integrable this theorem gives us a definite an answer of the of this question that means if f1 plus f1 and f2 are integrable then f1 plus f2 is also integrable on the same domain and integra integration of this sum equal to integration of the separate function so this is about the theorem you can watch uh, the statement of the theorem on your screen and we will prove this theorem so it is given that f1 and f2 are bounded are bounded if both functions are bounded then clearly their sum is also bounded clearly f is also bounded clearly f is also bounded now let us take let p equal to partition x0 equal to a x1 x2 dash dash xn equal to b this is the partition of close interval a comma b and let capital m i dash comma small m i dash capital m i double dash comma small m i double dash semicolon capital m i comma small m i are the bounds are these are the supremum and infimum supremum and infimum of f1 f2 and f respectively respectively what is our f f is addition of these two f1 plus f2 so these are the bounds of this function then we know that capital m i dash plus capital m i double dash is the upper bound of the function 
f since these are the supremum ok. So, we get the result that m i dash plus small m i double dash is less than equal to small m i less than equal to capital M i less than equal to capital M i dash plus small m capital M i double dash. So, remember this number this uh, capital M i double dash and a small m i double ca plus uh, capital M i double dash and capital M i dash this is a upper bound rough upper bound of the function f. But we have already taken the supremum value is a capital M i. So, capital M i is a less than or equal to capital M i dash plus capital M i double dash and uh, this inequality gives us the whole uh, results. Therefore, this is important to understand how it, it how it is possible ok. These are the separate capital M i dash and capital M i double dash are the separate uh, supremum and infimum of f over the uh, interval and therefore, capital uh, m i is a supremum of this function and supremum is always a such a number uh, which may be uh, is a not a smaller number than capital m i is a supremum of f. Therefore, we have capital m i is less than equal to capital m i dash plus capital m i double dash. Now, here we multiply this uh, inequality by delta x i and uh, we take the summation over i is equal to 1 to n in a one step ok. Then we get that small m i dash into delta x i i equal to 1 to n plus summation of small m i double dash delta x i i equal to 1 to n is less than equal to summation of small m i delta x i i is equal to 1 to n less than equal to summation of capital M i delta x i i is equal to 1 to n. This is less than equal to summation of capital M i dash delta x i i is equal to 1 to n plus capital uh, summation of capital M i double dash delta x i i is equal to 1 to n. Then what is this? This is a lower sum of the function f1 and this is a lower sum of the function f2. This is a lower sum of the function f. This is upper sum of function f. This is upper sum of function f1 plus upper sum of function f2. Okay. Now, here this is like 2 less than 5 less than 7 less than 10 and here 7 minus 5 is 2, 2 is a less than 10 minus 2 that is 8 ok. Apply the same criteria here we get UPF minus LPF is less than equal to UPF1 plus UPF2 minus L p f 1 minus L p f 2 ok. Now, combining these two let us combining the upper sums of the function f 1 minus lower sum of the function f 2 ok. We uh, make some space you can check this summation now we arrive at UPF minus LPF is less than equal to UPF1 minus LPF1 plus UPF2 minus LPF2. Okay. Now, we will use the condition of the function f1 and f2. What is given? Function f1 and f2 are integrable. Function f1 and f2 are integrable therefore, by condition of integrability for epsilon greater than 0 there exists a partition p of closed interval a comma b with norm e of p less than delta upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon ok. This is the condition of integrability. So, what is given? Since f1 and f2 are integrable as f1 and f2 are integrable 
therefore for epsilon greater than 0 there exist a partition partition p of closed interval a comma b with <coughs> norm mu of p less than delta such that u p f 1 minus l p f 1 is less than epsilon epsilon is any arbitrary value therefore we take epsilon by 2 since we need here this should be less than epsilon we are adjusting that value so whenever if we have proved we able to prove that a person minus lower sum is less than epsilon then automatically by condition of integrability apply it we can apply to the function f okay and but here we can take any value therefore we take here epsilon by 2 lpf minus lpf2 is less than epsilon by 2 now let us put this value upper value in the inequality 1 if we put this value then you can see that we get upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon by 2 from equation 1 we have upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 equal to epsilon and hence the function f which is a sum of these two f1 plus f2 is integrable function now uh, half part of this theorem is completed now uh, look at the second part of this uh, second part of this theorem we have to show that the integration of f equal to integration of this sum of these two we have proved that the integration exists and the function is integrable let us move towards the half remaining part of this theorem okay what is a come again once again we can apply the darbox condition since functions f1 and f2 are integrable functions are integrable therefore by darbox theorem by darbox theorem you can watch this theorem in our video in the previous video there for epsilon greater than 0 there exist a partition p of closed interval a comma b with norm with norm mu of p less than delta this condition is required everywhere okay such that such that u p f 1 is less than equal to integration a to b of f 1 plus 1 by 2 epsilon and u p f 2 is less than equal to integration a to b f 2 plus 1 by 2 epsilon okay again we know that the function is uh, integrable f is integrable and integration of f gives us integration of f is less than equal to upper sum of the f but we have seen that this upper sum of f is less than equal to upper sum of f1 plus upper sum of f2 okay but what is upper sum of f1 upper sum of f1 is less than upper integral of f1 plus 1 by 2 epsilon plus upper integral of f2 integration of f2 plus 1 by 2 epsilon okay so this gives us integration a to b here in uh, integration a to b less than equal to integration a to b f1 dx plus integration a to b f2 dx plus 1 by 2 epsilon plus 1 by 2 epsilon equal to epsilon but what is epsilon here epsilon is arbitrary number arbitrary greater than 0 epsilon is greater than or equal to 0 okay so if this is a greater than or equal to 0 it is a very closure this gives us that the upper integral or uh, the integral of f is less than equal to integration of f1 plus integration of f2 okay integration of f2 if epsilon is uh, 0 
then we have still the inequality this function is less than or equal to this is our equation number 2. Now this is for two function f1 and f2 instead of this function if we proceed for minus functions that means replacing f by minus f if we replace f by minus f f1 by minus f1 f2 by minus f2 the result is a still hold for the functions then integration a to b of minus f is less than equal to integration of minus f1 plus integration of minus f2 okay now multiplying throughout by minus sign if we multiply throughout by minus sign the inequality reverses and we get integration of f is greater than equal to integration of f1 plus integration of f2 okay now look at the equation number 2 and 3 so what is the meaning of this the same number is greater and same number is a smaller and it is possible only if integration of f equal to integration of f1 plus integration of f2 okay so this proves the theorem integration of f equal to integration of f1 plus integration of f2 so this shows that how we can separate the integra integration over the separate function right so this is a one of the important theorem about the integrability of a function